Okay, stretching. Here we go again. As a physiotherapist, I get asked a lot of questions about stretching. But this video is not going to be your basic stretching video. I need to take you into a deep dive into some of the physiology going on here when we stretch. This video will be science heavy, but if you stick through it, you will have a much deeper understanding of your body and the methods that you need to improve your flexibility. We need to start with the basics here. What is stretching? It's simple. It's a muscle lengthening, but it's not what you think it is. The feeling of stretching is actually your muscles contracting. You heard me right. You don't feel your muscles stretching, you feel your muscles contracting. In your muscles, you have nerve fibers called muscle spindles. These are the nerve fibers that detect the length of the muscle. And when they detect it going too far that the nerve fibers think they're going to damage the muscle, basically they cause an involuntary contraction to stop the muscle from lengthening any further. It's actually a self protection mechanism. It feels like a stretch because that's what you have been told stretching feels like. It's how your brain now interprets that type of muscle contraction. The problem lies with the sensitivity of these muscles, not the muscle length itself. For most people, this response kicks in far earlier than the point at which they risk tissue damage. This sensitivity increases with age and a lack of training. Why do you think babies are so bendy? If you were knocked out or, for example, people going under for surgery, guess what happens? They're bendy as hell. That's because there's no nervous system getting in the way telling the muscles to contract. What I'm about to do now is demonstrate the nervous system working in action so you can try it yourself. However, this isn't how I recommend you stretch all of the time. It's just so you can understand how the nervous system works. If you want to be lazy and skip the sciencey bit here, I'll have the chapters linked below. That way you can get straight into what stretching methods you should be using. That brings me on to method number one, antagonistic pairs. Most muscles work in a pair. For example, your bicep and your tricep. They are called an antagonistic pair. So when you contract your bicep, the bicep becomes the agonist because it's shortening. And in essence, the tricep has to become the antagonist because it's lengthening. So if you're contracting your bicep, your tricep has to relax to allow the arm to flex. Let's try this with a stretch. We're gonna use the quadricep and the hamstring antagonistic pair here. What you're gonna do from this position, you're gonna start with a bent knee for me because this is gonna show how much more range you can get in the hamstrings. From there, you want to fold over until you feel a really deep stretch in your hamstrings. From this position, I want you to tense your quadriceps as hard as possible. Tense, 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 tense. And what you're gonna notice is the legs are gonna straighten themselves out an extra few centimeters that you didn't get when you were just standing there without contracting the quads. The harder you tense your quadriceps, the more length you should be able to gain into the hamstring as the muscle has to relax to allow the quadriceps to contract further. Method number two. The next method that we've got here is called proprioceptive neuromuscular facilitation more commonly known as PNF stretching. What we're gonna be doing in this one is contracting the muscle as hard as possible whilst we're in the stretch at your end range of movement. This is going to elicit a greater nervous system relaxation phase as the nervous system is fatigued, allowing you to go deeper into the stretch. This one is more risky as it puts more stress onto the tissue, so please take precaution when doing this one. I like to demonstrate this one in the seated position here. So I have one leg straight, I bring the other foot in, and that way we can focus on one hamstring at a time. Go into your stretch until you find the hamstring, it can no longer lengthen anymore for you. Then what we're gonna do here is we're gonna contract our hamstring as hard as we can for five seconds. So I like to do this by pushing my heel into the ground and that contracts the hamstring hard for me. So from here, squeeze, five, four, three, two, one. And what you should find from here is that you'll be able to go deeper into the stretch until the hamstring stops you once again. 
hold it for 30 seconds at the end of the stretch here. You can then ease your way out of it, swap to the other side and repeat. You want to do this two to four times on each side, repeating. This brings me onto my next vital piece of information on how you should stretch. Now you know that stretching is more about training the nervous system to allow the muscle to be longer rather than lengthening the muscle itself. We can talk about the actual methods we need to use to improve this flexibility. My first top tip is sets, not time. As we said earlier, your nervous system and your muscles are working and contracting just like in a gym set. That way, it needs to rest in between sets. This is how we really make some flexibility gains. If we start to look at the research, we can start to see that shorter duration around that 15 second mark doesn't elicit that many gains. Going up to 30 seconds, you start to see more improvements, but anything over 30 seconds here, actually you don't see any more improvements than 30 seconds. So 30 seconds is a sweet spot optimal point here. Sets is where the improvement comes from. Repeating each stretch two to four times to gain the improvements that you need. Now we can talk about the frequency that we do the stretching. You need to be doing three to six stretching sessions per week on each muscle group. There's no way around this one. It's gonna take time and more frequently than you're probably doing at the moment. Three sessions a week is the minimum to start to see some really decent improvements. If you're doing any more than three a week, you start to see diminishing returns up to six sessions a week. However, if you'd like to do the six, I'm not gonna stop you. Stretching, it's not for everyone, I know. If you're one of them, you need to check out my part three guide of this video, because in that video, I go over how strength training can actually improve your flexibility as well. For now though, I hope that this video has really deepened your understanding of how stretching actually works and you found it useful. If you're a runner or a cyclist, then you need to be checking out part two of this guide where I go over the most crucial stretches that you will need as a runner or a cyclist. This has been Cycling Unboxed. Thank you so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you in a future video.